Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. Today I'm going to be doing my first ever 3D printer review. The people at Anycubic were kind enough to send me their new Photon Mono. It's an SLA printer, so we're going to be able to get some amazing looking details in our prints. But let's go ahead and unbox it and see what comes in the total package. Now it has your basic stuff like a power cord and uh, some resin filters. It also comes with a metallic scraper. That was something I really enjoyed. The other resin printer I got just only came with a plastic one. So this metal one looks pretty high quality. Got a bunch of little knickknacks to work on the printer, like an Allen wrench and uh, some other things. Here we've got the resin tray. It's got a nice little cutout for you to pour in the resin easily. It's got an all metallic build surface, so that's nice. The build plate is metal, as well as what connects it to the printer itself. Now here's the printer. Comes all nicely packaged, lots of styrofoam, so <laughs> no need to put that away. Now here's a good look at everything that comes in the package. It also includes some face masks, some gloves, a USB stick for loading onto your files. So now let's put it all together. Now I'm pretty dumb from inhaling too many paint fumes, but luckily this setup was really easy. All we had to do basically was uh, slide on the build plate onto its housing, and that's it. This is much simpler than an FDM printer where you have like three different motors to plug in, all sorts of headaches and belts. So this is something I really enjoy about SLA printers. Now since this is an SLA printer and we can get some insanely high details, I wanted to test print one of my most insanely high detailed models, and that's going to be the Captain Rex figurine, the Sentinel pose. It stands at about 30 centimeters tall, unfortunately we can't print it at its full size. We are going to be printing it at 75% scale, but it is very high detailed as far as file size goes, it is massive, so this is really going to put the printer and the software through its paces. This file is also available for sale and free to my patrons on Patreon. So on the included USB stick is the software that you're going to need to slice the files, and that's called Photon Workshop. Now I've brought the head in, and like I said, we're going to be printing all the individual pieces at 75% scale so we can fit everything on the build plate, but the software included is going to be my first real criticism. It is just really, really clunky, hard to navigate, hard to view. You'll see a lot of times I'm looking at it from a weird angle. That's just because the, the camera is weird to move. It, is not really intuitive. I kept getting some errors where when I tried to move an object by clicking on it and dragging it, it would completely disappear it from view. I don't know where it went off to, maybe like a thousand miles off the build plate, I don't know. So I ended up having to move it through the navigation menu on the left hand side there. But as clunky as the software is, it still slices the files fine. And software is probably one of the easier things to fix. It's not anything mechanical and you don't have to get new parts for it or anything. I mean, I was a software developer. I, I know how these things work. The fix might not be easy, but it should be possible. The file format that you're gonna need for this printer is PWMO. I'm not sure what that stands for, but that is the file extension that the printer is expecting. Another headache that I had as far as the software and firmware goes is that when you load and save the files onto your USB stick, be sure and not put them in a folder. I found that when I tried to put everything into a folder structure, I couldn't even see it. That gave me quite a bit of confusion as to why my files weren't showing up when I tried to print them. So in the future, if you're coming across this problem, try moving the files outside of the folder structure and into just the base USB file location. Once we finally got all the pieces sliced and saved, we can finally start printing and appreciating what this printer can do. So I've started printing all the pieces, but I wanted to take a closer look at some of them in particular. Like this one, it is the like thighs and the waist. It's probably one of the largest pieces, and well it is the largest piece of this build. So I wanted to take a look at it, and take a look at some of the details on it. And I'm gonna clean off the print using some 99% rubbing alcohol and some clippers to get the support off. While I'm doing that, we could talk about one of the coolest parts about this printer, and that is its speed. I wanted to test it against my Elegoo Mars, a similar size printer, and see how the two compare. Now using identical settings in two different slicers, I printed the thighs and legs on both printers. Now on the Photon Mono, it took about six hours to fully print, while on the Elegoo Mars, it took about eight. So there have definitely been some improvements in the SLA curing process to make prints even faster. And I was really pleased with how fast the printer was. So now that I've got it all cleaned off, let's take a closer look at some of the details. Now when the camera focuses, you can see the stitching pattern on the comma, all of the lines on the groin piece and the waist, the little thermal detonator on the backside has all of its buttons. 
and I'm just really pleased with how much detail the printer was able to get from the model. Now the second piece I wanted to look at was the platform that this whole thing is going to stand on. The reason I wanted to look at it was because I had very little hope that this would actually print well. It's printed on its side, kind of tilted, and there is very little connecting it to the actual build plate. I thought for sure it was going to fall off, but to my pleasant surprise it all worked out fine. The supports came right off, and with just a little bit of sanding I can smooth out the edge and you can barely even tell what side it was printed on. Now that we've got all the pieces printed out, we're gonna let them cure in the sun for a little bit, and then we should be able to put all this together. Once all the pieces have sat in the sun for an hour or two, we can glue them together with just some cyanoacrylate super glue. With all of that cured, let's take a good long look at exactly what this printer is capable of. Overall, I was really pleased with the machine. It's got a very nice price point, it's very powerful, and with some small tweaks to the software that comes with it, this would be a very excellent choice as somebody's first printer getting into the hobby. Be sure and check out the links in the description to this printer, as well as any Cubic site. Thank you all for watching. I hope to see you guys again in the next video.